Hi, this screencast is going to walk through submission and option limits. My name is Jake Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the Web4 module for Drupal 8. So what are submission limits? Submission limits allow site builders to specify how many submissions are allowed per web form, source entity, or user. So submission limits you know, can be tracked via tokens and blocks, and you can display a message once a limit is met. So, and submission limits can be used to you know, limit the number of you know, event registrants or job applicants. And they're defined using web form settings on the submission tab. And I'm going to go and give you a little demo of that. So I have a clean install. I'm going to do this demo just using a simple form because I think it's the best way to just illustrate what's going on. So if I do submission limit, I create a form. And we're just going to allow someone to add a text field. Here we go. Text field. Whoop, sorry for the typo. Hit save. So we have a simple form with the text field. Now if I go over to Settings, Submissions, I'm going to go to the Submission Limits tab. And I'm going to say only, for this form, only two submissions are allowed ever. Keeping it really simple. I just want to give you the most basic use case. I'm not even going to show you the mess, like the default messages, no more submissions are permitted. You can customize it. I'm going to hit Save. I'm going to go to the View tab. Here's a little interesting nuance here. Administrators can keep entering submissions past the limit. So to show you this properly, I have to log out, click back, refresh. Now I'm on the form, test one. That's the first one. Hit back, test two. No more submissions are permitted. We've got back to the form and just blocks users from exceeding that limit. And you can set that limit in many ways per day, per year. That's the most basic submission limits to the form. I'm going to go in, I'm going to log back in, get us back to where we were so that we can kind of continue. Okay, so let's keep going. So what are unique submission limits? This is kind of a slightly advanced concept and I want to spend a second and explain it to you. And unique submission limits allow site builders to limit one submission per web form, source entity, or user. Now, you can set a submission to limit to one, someone fills it out, and they can't do anything else. Unique submission limits are kind of the concept that, well, they can fill it out and edit a singular submission. That's it. One-to-one -one relationship to web form, source entity, or user. And you can use it to create dedicated user profiles. So you could create a user profile and say, Every user on this site can fill out this form once. And once they fill it out and they come back to the form, they're going to get the form pre-filled with the data that they've already entered. You can even kind of create configuration settings. You can create a web form that mimics, you know, like site information form. Or you can even have a web form associated with a node that's kind of adding extra data to that node, kind of like metadata or editorial information. These are really tricky kind of not edge cases, but use cases that you kind of have to figure out. But let me just demo what I mean from a, you know, a unique submission. So let's go into add a web form. So we're going to do submission limit unique. I'm going to save it. I'm going to do the same text field. Here we go. Text field. Same thing, go over to settings. Sorry I'm clicking fast, but I'll, I'll also not a little bit, but settings, submissions. Now we go to the unique tab, I'm the unique section. So you could do it per web form. Let's do it per web form. Now I'm going to check it. Everything else is going to get hidden because this is a toggle. And it says only submissions, administrators will be able to create and update unique submissions. Web form blocks, can place this in the desired place. Make sure users are allowed to view any and edit any submission on this web form. And that means that they can get to this submission, create it, and edit it. Now let's just look at it. I'm an administrator. It's totally fine. I go in here, and the scenario is I'm here. I fill it out. I don't have a confirmation message, but if I hit save, it 
redirects the form with the submission information. Information. It's created a submission, and there's the data. And now you can go and keep resaving it. Even if you go to the test tab, you can't actually create a new submission. It's a singular submission to this web form. And that's why it can go further where you can have a singular submission to each source entity the web form is attached to, like a web form node. Or if you do it to a user, you could say, the user comes to this form and they can only fill it out once. And when they come back, it's not, it's not going to say anything other than give them the form to fill out again with the data that they already entered. It has very specific use cases, but it kind of creates a cleaner user experience. If you set the default submission limit to one, they'd get in and say you can't do anything else. You might be able to say redirect, you know, put a message in if you want to edit, click here, but this is a much cleaner UX for a one-to-one -one relationship. I'm going to get us back to our starting point. I'm going to keep going. So what are option limits? We have to you know, switch gears here. Options are associated with select menu, checkboxes, and radios. And option limits allow site builders to specify how many submissions are allowed per an, per an element's options. And you, know, you have to enable the option limits module. Check, select menus, checkboxes, and radios. Limits can be defined per option custom limit message is appended to the option. Limits are tracked via custom report. And you know they can be used to limit the number of event registrations registrants per room or used to track a product inventory. And here's the handler UI. I'm going to demo this. Over here it's showing you t-shirts with the numbers that are allowed. I'm going to go over to the demo tab. Now I'm going to use the web form event demo. I'm going to go to the home page, back to site. I'm going to go to events. I'm going to go to the demo event one. I'm going to register. And this also has submission limits. It limits users to seven submissions, but I'm going to go down to t-shirt size and say, I would like to get an extra large. And there's six. I'm going to select it. I'm going to click back. Only three people are allowed to register for this event, by the way. That's what the demo is kind of showing. But if I go to register again, I go to t-shirts, you'll see there's only five remaining. So it's like a burn down chart. It's tracking an inventory of t-shirts for this event, so you know what you have. And let's go to the back end a little bit. If we go over to the results tab, we're going to be able to see the options. And this is going to give us a little progress menu showing us each of the t-shirt sizes what the limit is, how many are remaining, and what total, and the progress. We're 70% there. By the way, if you want to jump to the form and look at the back end, keep in mind this is a event registration web form attached to an event. So we are on the event. To get to the form, it's a little tricky. We have to go all the way up to web forms. We have to find the event registration form. And there it is. And here's our results. We have that one registrant where someone's picked a t-shirt in that use case. Now we can go look at the settings by going over to settings, handlers. Let's go. There we go. T-shirt limit. Hit edit. And there are our limits set for all events. You can customize this lots of different ways, but I kind of want to just get you familiar with the concept. You can change the messages. More, no more t-shirts available remaining slots. There's help text to walk you through. There's also an explanation of these individual placeholders. It's a very useful, kind of tricky concept to get your head wrapped around. It's worth experimenting with. Um, I thought t-shirts was a good demo. Rooms, if you want to, by the way, there's a default where you can go in and you don't have to specify each option. You can go down here and say one option. So let's say you had rooms and you want to let people pick which room they're booking for an event space. You say, you list out the rooms, you say one per room. It even supports entity references. So if each room is a separate entity, you can say only, people can only pick one room for this form. And then it'll, it'll actually disable it or remove it. Experiment with it, get used to it. I hope you enjoy this feature. So who sponsored the options limit feature? Well, Steve Babbitt at Mile3, mile3.com is their website. And 
you know, he had a client who needed this feature. Steve read my blog post about sponsoring a feature and decided to reach out to me via the web form modules issue queue. And, you know, how can you sponsor a feature where you could read that blog post and it gives you some information and you can create a ticket in the web form issue queue. And that's it. You can read more about me at jrockwoods.com. And thank you for watching this screencast.